What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that contains a number of different amazing procedural materials that are super realistic for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so one of the things that I do for the channel is I try to keep on top of what some of the best add-ons are for Blender at the moment. And so this one caught my attention, it's the Sanctus Library. And so Sanctus Library is basically a collection of procedural materials from Sanctus. Um, note that through July 21st, there's a 25% off code that you can use in order to download this as well, but I'll link to this in the notes down below. But basically what this is, is this comes with a collection of different materials. Um, he's currently adding to this collection, so um, there's going to be more materials coming with this in the future, um, but basically he's got a number of different materials in here for all sorts of different things. So he's got different stones, he's got different uh, like car paint materials, all sorts of stuff contained inside of this add-on. So we'll take a look at some of those in a minute, but basically the way this works is you can either install it as an add-on so for example, you can see how I've installed his add-on right here, and I can select, select many of these different materials, or you can also just install this with these in here as um, assets. So if I go to my asset library, I've saved that file in my asset library folder, so these now show up as assets. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at a few of the different things that you can do with this add-on. So you can see that we have fabrics, but we have a bunch of different kinds of materials. So for example, you've got building materials, fabrics, foods, metals, other things like that. And so the add-on also comes with the shader ball that you can use for testing materials. But let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the materials that are in here and some of the things that you can do with them. So for example, let's click on this, uh, let's go with maybe this bronze material for right now. So I'm gonna take this material, I'm gonna select this object, and I'm gonna click on the button to assign this material. And in this case, I've already added it, so I'm just gonna assign the existing. But you can see what this does is this adds this kind of like bronze looking material in here. But the real power of this is this is a procedural material. And what that means is that means I can select this material and notice how this gives me the node set up for the material. This one's pretty simple, but there's others that are um, more complex as well. We'll take a look at them in a second. But basically I can adjust the scale of the material in here as well as the bump to set how bumpy it is. So notice how the bumpier it is, the more bump I get on here, um, the lower bump, if I drag this to the left, then I get a much smoother material. And so this is one of the simpler ones, but let's say that we were to add one of the more complex ones. So let's take a look at one of these smart metals. So maybe this one right here. So we're gonna add this smart metal in here. Well, when we add the smart metal, um, first of all, it's gonna take a second to compile. And the reason for that is because these are more complex shaders, right? So it's gonna take a minute for this to apply in here. So for these smart materials, you've got a lot more things that you can adjust, right? From your simple things, like your metal roughness, other things like that. So if I didn't want my red metal to uh, to reflect so much, I could change this to like a 0.5 or something like that. And this is going to adjust the actual material over here. You can also adjust things like if you have scratches or if you have um, worn textures. So for example, let's say that I want to bring scratches in here. I'm going to put in a value of 0.25 and notice how this adds, whoops, notice how this adds scratches to this object. And so you can adjust things like the seed. So you can set these so that they show up randomly in different places. So you can also adjust the rotation of the scratches. You can adjust how intense they are. So if I bring this down to like 0.5, do that. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do to adjust these materials. And what I like about this is just how procedural these are. And so for example, let's say that I don't like where the dust is or the rust is showing up on here. Notice how I can adjust the seed of the rust in order to get it to show up in a different location. You can also set like the color of the rust. So for example, let's say I wanted this to be a um, more of like an orange or a yellow color. So I can adjust this to the inside and then I can also adjust my second rust color to more of like a red value or something like that. And so let's take a look at another one of these smart metals, like maybe this one right here. We're gonna assign this metal, but this one, let's take a look at the dust option. So there's an option in here to um, add or apply dust to this object. And notice how what it's doing is it's generating a dust mask. But Right now, nothing is happening with this material with any dust because this value isn't dragged in here. So if you wanted to add dust in here, you could just drag it in to the dust mask option. And so once you do that, notice how you're starting to get this kind of like orangish material in your uh, recesses of this object. 
And then you can adjust things in like the distance or the amount of dust, other things like that. So it's using kind of an ambient occlusion map in order to add the dust to these recesses. Let's say we wanted to make this uh, a different color. You could come in here and you could adjust this to more of like a gray or something like that. So we could adjust that, maybe bring this down, but you can use this in order to add damage or dust or other things to the materials that are in here. And so let's say we were to assign something like a stone material. So we've got a stone selection, but let's go ahead and add like this polished granite material to this object. Again, each one of these material types is gonna have their own, um, it's gonna have its own set of nodes that you can use in order to adjust different things, right? Like for example, I might wanna bring the texture scale on this one down like this. And so you can adjust the size of that texture, but then you can also do things like adjusting your roughness. So if I bring my minimum roughness down and my max roughness up, notice how I'm getting this really cool like a uh, reflective rock material that's in here. So you can also adjust the bump, so how rough this is, other things like that. So again, there's just a bunch of different things in here. The tune shaders are kind of interesting um, if you're looking for that. So you can add like a halftone material or a bunch of different materials in here. But the, And so like this tune shader is going to basically shade this darker where the shadows are inside of your model. So you can add this, use this to add like a tune look to this object as well. But uh, one of my favorite things about this particular add-on, and so under the buildings settings, there's some really interesting, uh, more like architectural style materials in here. Like for example, I've got this aging tiles material. And so if you look at this, first off, it doesn't look super good right now, right? It just looks like kind of an average flat material. Well, the reason for that is because um, this is a material that's set up with displacement and settings that really work well in cycles. So if I was to toggle this over to rendered mode, notice how we get a much better result, right? So when we render this in cycles, notice how there's tiles missing, there's displacement, there's reflections. The material actually looks really good. And you can get this result by changing the settings for this particular material in the shader editor. And so I have to be a little bit careful with this because um, for whatever reason, when I make changes in cycles on my computer, it actually crashes my screen recorder. And so I'm gonna jump back out of cycles just for a minute, um, just so you can kind of see what this does. But if you look at this, um, these materials have an option between either a simple setting or an advanced setting. So you've got your simple materials right here. And what those are gonna do is that's going to adjust, allow you to adjust things like the age of the tile, as well as like the dirtiness of the tile. Down below, you can adjust a little bit of everything, right? So you can adjust like if there's missing pieces, you can adjust if there's damaged tiles, dirt, mortar roughness, other things like that. And then there's basically just a, a switch between the two. So if you wanna use the simple, right, you would just switch this to one or zero. So if, it, if we use the simple, then it's gonna use the simple setting right here in order to adjust what's going on with the tile. If you use the advanced, it's gonna use the advanced settings down below. But notice how I can do things like adjusting the age of the tile as well as the dirtiness of the tile. And that's gonna adjust in here. Notice I'm getting less dustiness and other things like that um, on this surface. So you can do either one of those inside of the tile materials. There's other materials in here as well. So things like roof tiles, stone floor, uh, wood floors, other things like that. Plus new materials are getting added every month. All right, so one thing, one thing I wanna make sure you know how to do is I wanna make sure that you know how to set up the displacement. Um, so if we uh, add a mesh, for example, so I'm gonna add a mesh right here, move this over, and then we're just gonna apply the stone material. So I'm gonna tap the N key. And so let's say we were to bring in like one of these stone floor materials, for example, maybe this one right here, we're gonna assign this. Well, right now, if we assign this material and we were to render it using cycles, it's not actually going to look very good. So let's say I was to jump over into cycles right here, and we're gonna set this to GPU. All right, so at the moment, this doesn't look very good, right? So, and what we need to do is we need to turn on adaptive subdivision because what's happening is it's trying to displace this material, but there's no geometry in here for it to actually displace with. So what we need to do is we need to go into cycles in our settings. We want to turn on the experimental settings right here. And then for our object, what we want to do is we want to add a subdivision surface modifier. 
which notice how we're getting a little more detail in here, but it's not what we want. We want to check the box for adaptive subdivision. And usually I switch this over to simple before I do that. But as soon as I click on adaptive subdivision, notice what that's going to do is that's actually going to come in here and that's going to adjust this. I want to make sure that I've applied the rotation and scale of my object. And then we can adjust this in the shader, right? Because there's a lot of ups and downs in this. So I'm actually just going to drag a shader editor over here and we'll bring our displacement multiplier down to maybe like a 0.5 or something like that. But now you can see how the actual displacement is in here working with this material, um, but you do need to make sure that you set up that adaptive subdivision in order to get that to work. And again, remember that these are all adjustable, so there's definitely some things in here that I would want to adjust. So maybe bring my tile width down to like one and one, something like that. But notice how now, because we have the adaptive subdivision turned on, we're getting this much better displacement in our materials right here. All right, so one thing I will note, because these are procedural, they do get a little bit heavy on your computer. So just make sure that you've got the hardware that can run like displacement and other things like that. So I'm gonna link to this add-on on this page. I'm also gonna link to some videos about creating your own procedural materials if you are interested in that. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.